I was just watching a couple of videos on um, evolution and creationism. Um, I saw one where Ron Paul said that he, um, he thought evolution was just a theory and that his personal beliefs were that we had a creator and, and so on. And I watched um, a, Nova, a Nova documentary about um, a trial, I guess, in uh, Kansas about um, whether or not creationism should be taught in schools. Um, and um, I wanted to um, just chime in a little bit here. Uh, personally, do I buy the theory of evolution, um, Darwin's theory of evolution, of natural selection and survival of the fittest? Yeah, I do buy it. Um, but um, it's not a theory of origin in... Um, in a complete sense. It doesn't explain everything we might ask about how we came to be here. It is one mechanism involved in this phenomenon we call evolu evolution. Um, there's much more to it than just survival of the fittest, than just random gene, <clears throat> excuse me, random gene mutation and, um, you know, survival in the face of a harsh environment where the wheat die off and, and the, um, the well-adapted, the most fit, survive. There's more to it than that. There's, there's symbiosis, there's organisms um, combining in order to better foster the, um, the life of each of them. There's, um, there's cooperation uh, in relationship uh, in nature, and the whole ecosystem is connected, and so it's not as though we could really reduce the driving force of evolution to just individual species competing against one another. There's also this element of relationship. Um, so, you know, the point is there's, lo there's lots of factors involved in um, how biological evolution um, moves along. Darwin's theory is not the be-all and end-all total explanation for how biological evolution takes place. It's one facet and there's an ongoing investigation into what other facets are involved. Um, another thing that Darwin's theory of evolution doesn't tell us, um, regardless of biological evolution, um, where it certainly gives us just a facet, it doesn't tell us anything about cosmic evolution. There's no coherent um, theory of how matter and energy arose and somehow transformed into solar systems and planets and um, planets with the elements required to uh, produce life in the first place. There's no theory to account for how matter crossed this bridge um, and became life. We don't understand how that happened. We don't understand how life then um, became symbolic or or intelligent or capable of um, having a mind which can speak and understand information on, it seems, um, a, a higher dimensional level than just normal biological creatures who are confined to their senses. Human beings with minds can actually have a, a discourse, a meaningful um, um, exchange of information in almost an on an immaterial plane, um, how did that happen? There's I mean, we don't have a coherent theory that runs through all of the natural order and explains our origins um, from a more macro view. So, in this context, um, it's not as though it were. Uh, there were any solid ground for you know a, a complete atheist rationalist to side on with evolution against creationism. Evolution is um, very unfinished doctrine, and um, it may turn out to be even more spiritual than um, the religious, uh, intelligent, design creationist type stories. Um, in the sense that it's more mysterious, more awe-inspiring. Awe so, that's basically all I wanted to add to this, uh, this whole debate. So, um, 
probably going to be some people who disagree, some people who uh, like what I'm saying, but um, let's see where we go with this.